home building and remodeling show. Let's go. Welcome everybody to the home building and remodeling show. My name is Chris Kirby and I'll be your host. I am the owner of three construction companies on the Alabama Gulf Coast. The show is about residential construction. We're going to cover topics of home building and remodeling. Are you thinking of doing a remodel or building a home? Are you a contractor looking to improve your knowledge base or grow your business? Have you ever done a remodel project or built a home? There were so many things you wish you knew or that you could have done differently during the process. Then this show is for you. We break down the process of building and remodeling and how to have the best results during your project. Whether you're a DIYer looking for tips, someone looking to hire a contractor to do a project, or a contractor looking to expand your knowledge base or your business. Welcome aboard. Glad to have you. Stay tuned. We kick off the show with my thoughts on home building and remodeling. I'll share best practices and talk about some of our experiences in business and out in the field. These shared thoughts and lessons learned are meant to help you on your very own journey. Let's go. Question 15. What is your approach to safety and insurance for workers? This is a great question for both sides again because you want to hire a contractor who does have workers comp and is going to talk safety. So if our estimator goes out and sells a job, they should, uh, you know, they should talk about some initial safety concerns or address safety concerns uh, during the scope of the project and make sure that from your side as the client, you're protected and understanding how if something happens on the job site, what your liability is and what your role is in that. And then also for the contractor, it's the same thing, understanding what your liability and role in protecting the job site, the insurance and and stuff like that. So for the homeowner, you're going to want to see some a general liability po- uh, policy that covers damages and things like that. You're going to want to see a workers' comp policy and understand that they are protecting. If it's not the owner doing the work and they have people working for them, that everybody that comes into your household is protected by some sort of insurance because I know in most areas, if they are not and you hire them... Uh, that stuff should be laid out on contract, but if it's not, in, in some instances, you can be held liable if they're hurt in your home. So definitely a great question. Number 16 is what is the uh, dispute resolution process? So I know, again, back to our contract, we have it laid out that uh, our first thing would be mediation. Um, and I guess, you know, as, as a contract from the Home Builders Association and Remodelers Association, there's reasons for that. You do want to make it known um, if if you've ever been through something like that, it's tough for both sides to try to work through. Initially, you know, you want to verbalize though. Listen, if there's a disagreement on the project or it, how it should go, um, ultimately, when the client selects you as the contractor, you should own that project from beginning to end. The client should trust you to do the job you were hired to do. So if you have any concern from the contractor side or there are any red flags, you have to let them know who's in charge. You own that project. You are the expert in that field and it is your job to ensure that it is safe and done in a timely manner, but most of all that the quality is there. As the client, you want to make sure the same thing. You you need to allow them to do their job. There may be a misinterpretation of plans or, you know, the worst part is if there were no plans drawn and something turns out the way you don't want it to, then you have to be understanding and accommodating from the client side. If you've only verbally talked about a project and then you hired somebody and they did the project without a site plan and without visual drawings, visual details, then both sides have to be accommodating. And this is a conversation that needs to happen. I always recommend drawings, but in some instances, it's not necessary, but uh, you 
you don't get the exact outcome that you want. So it is a great conversation to have up front, dispute resolution and how we're going to handle things if there is a disagreement from the contractor and from the client side. This is our contractor shout out segment. We are going to pick 40 contractors a month that tag their business page in our post on the Home Building and Remodeling Show Facebook page. And this month we have with us AB Handyman Services from Smith Mountain Lake, Virginia, Stucco Pros from Windsor, Ontario, Canada, Top Gun Custom Homes and Remodeling in Shelbyville, Michigan, Lakes Home Improvement from Battle Creek, Michigan. Thank you all for commenting on the monthly post. We will do another post next month. Like, subscribe, and share our Facebook page. And hopefully you get a shout out next time. And now we move into Shop Talk. It's the portion of the show where I bring in a co-host and we cover trending topics in home building and remodeling. Hope you enjoy. Let's go. Welcome back, everybody. Today for our home building segment, we have Ryan Anderson. Uh, He may look familiar. Some of you may know him. Today, we want to talk about his new company and his new venture and his second career, which is 22 Builds, right? 22 Builds. Let us know kind of what that that company is about and why you started that, really. Let's get to the roots, and then we'll talk about what you do. Well, I kind of, I grew up like with a construction like background, like mm-hmm. tradesman. So that's kind of what I did before I ever thought I would be playing football. Yeah. So, no. so you were working in construction as a kid and then really, so did you like it? Was it a family thing? Like your family members or how yeah, did you get into yeah. the construction I did. Side? Family members, different family members, but um, I did. I started liking it. Like it was at a young age, you know, being a boy, like I was everywhere. Yeah. It was something that I like actually like doing because like, you can see the start into the finish of it, you know. You can see the results yeah, of, your, of your work. Right? Accomplished when you're done doing it. So I kind of always liked that. Started out in construction as a kid and then ended up playing football, right? I did. You play for Daphne, local local school here. So just, the show is national. Everybody don't know about Daphne. Yeah. Um, but uh, he played for the Daphne Trojans in high school. And then... From there, you you figured out you liked it and was pretty good. I mean, football, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It kind it kind of just happened, man. You know, ninth grade. Um, I went back. I went back to Daphne High School, and I kind of at tenth grade. Yeah, I hit like a growth spurt. Yeah, I was probably five nine, five ten, ninth grade, tenth grade. Yeah, I was six two. Wow. So like, I grew like crazy. Yeah. It changed, you know. That's when I started taking school seriously and football once I kind of realized I had a shot. Who was the first person that realized that you were going to be an NFL football player? Like, you were going to make it to the league. You had the potential that kind of said, hey, you can do this if you buckle up. Yeah. Um, Coach Guthrie, Robert Guthrie, actually, I'll never forget that. I was in 10th grade, and uh, he pulled me to the side after, like, a walkthrough. Yeah. He was like... You know, his coaches from here, from you know, I think it was Troy. He was like, yeah. they, they they like you. You know, it's like you got a shot. You know, if you do X Y Z and brace, you know, playing D line because I didn't want to play D line. It was yeah. like everybody looking for that. So yeah. that was kind of like my first like wake up call. When you heard that, your passion was already there, but that's when you started taking it serious. Yeah, it kind of like that's Made all that. Important. Yeah, that's all that mattered then. You yeah, know, I just wanted to see like how good I could be. And so there's only a small percentage of people that really make it. First of all, you play for, you know, I'm an, I'm an Alabama fan. And mm-hmm. uh, obviously, Coach Saban is, is a big deal. Um, and you had the luxury, the benefit of, of playing for him. So you had Coach Guthrie, who was, was speaking to you to, to make you buckle down and get right and say, hey, you can be a professional. Mm-hmm. And then you get picked up by Alabama. OK. And you play for somebody like Coach Saban. Right. Mm. Um, who talks about the standard and who talks about fundamentals and, and things like that. And then you went into the NFL and you were drafted in the second round. Uh-huh. OK. And so you were a true professional and took what you did serious. And so when you realize, hey, I, I like football, but it's time to move on. You already had it in you to say, when I identify what it is that I want to do, that I'm going to take it serious, Mm -hmm. right? And that's kind of what this is about for you is 
to gain credibility, you have to have experience, but you started out in construction. So although you're a new company, mm -hmm. right, you're an established presence. And so you, you have opportunities because of your gifts and talents to really help people by what you do. Now, we've talked, you know, prior to this, just about being from here, giving back, being in your hometown. Really, now you're in your hometown. Now, this isn't the only place that you do this, correct? Or is it? Yeah, you're focused on yeah, Baldwin County, yeah, my main focus. South Alabama, for everybody yeah. who don't know where Baldwin County is. So, um, and then 22, that was your that was your number in, in college? Yeah, I was actually, it was my friend, one of my close friends, Isaac Houston number. So okay. we went to high school together. We grew up together. Yeah. And uh, he joined the military. I went to college. He went to college for a bit, but we ended up going to the military and he ended up getting killed by a drunk driver. So wow. I switched to his number like my third year, something like that when that happened. Like you're playing football um, and you have to grow up quick as well for the discipline side, right? No Not everybody who makes it to Bama stays. Especially right. how, how Coach Saban, you know, how he ran his ship. You know? Yeah. That was a that was a big culture shock, you know, coming from Daphne where, you know, you could do – I pretty much, you know, did what I wanted to do. You yes. Know? And it ain't really bothered me, you know. But with him, it was like the little stuff. Yeah. He was just always on you about it. So that attention, was – Like attention to detail. Yeah, every little stuff, thing. Right? Like stuff you – I wouldn't even think he would think about. You know what I mean? He's like, hey, I know you was late for this class. You did it. You know what I mean? And you didn't even know he knew. Yeah. I'm and like, what? Like, yeah. So, but that that was that was major for me though. I feel like if I if I didn't have that, if I didn't go play for him, I don't know how it would have turned out. Right. You know, because he held me accountable. And that's so. I'm glad you said the word accountable yeah, because yeah. your background in business. Now you ended up getting a degree from Bama, right? Mm -hmm, I okay. did. And uh, so you've got your degree. You've worked with you know some high level, high caliber business people. Um, you've been coached by Nick Saban, one of the greatest when it comes to discipline, accountability, right? And and really taking your craft and what you do serious. So how is that now translate? You go to the league mm -hmm. and coming back here with twenty two builds, starting that up. How does that transfer to to here to twenty two bills? I feel like you know everything you just said. You know, I've been blessed, you know, to be in some some good situations. You know what I mean. So I feel like all of this correlate. Yeah. You know, I feel like you're gonna hire somebody. You're gonna hire that person based off who they are. Yeah. You know what I mean. I don't really care if you went to Harvard or yeah. It don't matter. That don't matter to me. You know what I mean. So I like I'm a, I'm gonna work with somebody based on their values. That's right. Know, what they've been through. Yeah. That, that this person ever persevered have you ever went through some how do he respond when he go through it went through you know yeah. so i feel like that's my life yeah you know so switching it over to this place it's it's, it's just the same when you thought about you know getting back to construction coming back home right when you were playing and doing and being coached at such a high level is that something that you want to do in your business. So the business of building is the business of building. Have you done, um, have you started any projects recently? What do you have in the works? Um, I'm doing a project right now that we just started in Birmingham. Okay. So a renovation and we built in like a garage. Okay. Like a man cave slash garage. Yeah. So that's what we start now. Um, and I got some other lots that I'm getting developed, getting the site work and stuff done on. So. What's the plan there? Are you doing a uh, the small development is it going to yeah, be a it's, couple of it's a small development it'll be uh, three houses in it on a two acre development um we're going to do 2900 square feet half acre lot then okay. uh, we have a 2400 square feet on probably a little bit under half acre lot too there. Now we're going to move into the portion of the show where we talk interior design. We're going to bring in an interior designer and we're going to talk trending design and products. Hope you enjoy. Let's go. When you're putting together, okay, let's get back to the consultation. You call, you're called, whether it's virtual or you go out there and you're walking through the home. Um, are you fact finding or how are you getting the information that you need to even start the project? I mean, listening, they have something, have, right? Listening, I would say you have to listen. Yeah. Because they're going to constantly be right. They're thinking as they're talking out loud. Gotcha. And so it sounds, I'm sure... <laughs> Tanya can relate. I mean, it's like, wait a second. We just went from like, within five minutes, something could change drastically. Yeah. And you're like, that's not what you just said. So you, you kind of have to take all the notes, 
Yeah, so you're listening. You're, you're listening, literally you're, taking yeah, notes, taking writing notes, stuff and down. You have to just, um, and then at the end of that consult, you can really start visualizing how to, like I said, pull it all together or eliminate some things if needed or whatever. So are you looking, are you, you're looking at the space too, oh, though, yeah, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah. And then, you know, you've done that. You've looked at the space. You've taken your notes. You've talked to the client. Now it's time to come back to the office and start putting it together. Right. So talk so, to me about putting together. So with the boards. And so I like to, um, I spend a lot of time on mine because I want them, if they really, really like it, yeah. I want them to be able to go buy that product immediately. So, so like I'm not just artificially throwing things out gotcha. to, to just give them. Cause you, they do have vision boards too. Yeah. Or some people call them vision boards. Vision boards. Okay. So, but I'm not just trying to give you a vision. I'm trying to give you something that you can actually That's get. Reality. So what you're moment. saying is when you're, when you're doing your mood board, so there are quick mood boards. There There's are, a, yes. a way to do it yeah. quickly, but you tend to take your time and put stuff that they can actually click the link or go and buy. Right, right. Okay, so I, got I can you. already have a price on it. I know immediately if it fits their budget, and that's important because if I add things that are crazy amount of money and that's not in their budget, they're going to be like, "Why did you even show me that? Like that's yeah. not even a reality." And now I don't even want to. <laughs> I'm glad you said no. that tip like that. That is a good tip of the day right there. Um, as an interior designer is making sure that you understand the budget. Right. Because like you said, people will get aggravated if you, they, you have been given a budget. Right. And you're showing them things outside of the budget. And I've seen salesmen or saleswomen. Yeah do that and they do it on purpose right and it really rubs people the wrong way where they may be commission based or whatever it is for whatever reason they immediately are showing stuff outside of the budget range and if they're turned off or they see something that maybe i have put on there and they're like well we wanted something a little fancier then i can say well that is probably going to be a hundred dollars more yeah. or 200 you know so i can raise the bar in that moment but i feel like at least it gives them a starting point to whatever budget they were wanting to stay in. Well, not only that, though, sometimes you get the reverse where you put together the mood board, they're happy, they come into our showroom and start looking around and say, okay, now show me this in uh, face-to-face. Um, and then they see the nicer or something that they just want. Right. And then that's when you have the conversation of, you know, it fits, maybe it does fit well with the project, but... It is over your budget. And some people then, they just want it and they're like, I will pay more. Exactly. Which is different right. than... And they have done that. I mean, tile really, I would say more than anything, really sucks them in fast. Yeah. <laughs> if they find a pretty tile, they're willing to just like, okay, we'll do everything. Okay. We've got Christy with us today and we're going to talk about... Uh, so here at Kirby Interior Design, we've been just discussing business, lead generation. And for me, given my construction background, I don't necessarily always know the vision. And that's why we started Kirby Interior Design. They are very creative, right? And uh, so one of the things that you all do for our clients is is a mood board, right? Yes. Okay. So let's talk about a mood board and kind of how that helps the client and how it helps with kitchen bath remodels and things like that. Mm. So what is a well, mood board? It's a collage of products, colors. Uh, it's basically a collage of the design, overall design uh, view or plan. Okay. And so you, it, it helps with the concept, right? Yes. Okay. And or so, some call it a concept board. Concept know. board. Okay. It, it, it has a couple of different yeah. names. Okay. Got right. it. Concept Big board. Words. Okay. We use mood board for <laughs> mood board Monday and nobody better hashtag. steal that from us. Ha yeah. Hashtag mood board Monday. It's, it's actually a lot of people have it. So. Dang. Sorry. Okay. So it's already that out there. Not an original. I'm just, I'm not up on We're not that, the OGs so. on that one. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So we put together these mood boards and um, let's talk about some of the things. How do you get the concept together for the client? 
Do you do a consultation? Well, what yes. does that look like? Yes. So there's always the consultation. You, yeah, those are necessary. You have to have them. I okay. Mean, it, so if they call, if they call the office, the first step is to set up the consultation. That's correct. Okay. And so now, and um, because we are in a tourist area, some of our clients obviously don't live here. Okay. Um, so we offer that virtually or in person but Love in person okay. is great because you can actually see you can go to the home you can take measurements if you need to um tanya our new designer actually has a virtual coming up um later on today so maybe she can oh, come cool. on the podcast later and explain how that would look well so because a lot um, of people would say you know a virtual consult so if you're if you're not there how can you come up with right well, usually if they're already calling, they have something in mind. Thanks for joining us today. As always, we are grateful for our listeners and your continued support. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on social media via Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Get more info at our website, www.thehomebuildingshow.com. And as always, remember who we are. The Home Building and Remodeling Show.